beautifuls, this is Arami here, and welcome back to Changeling, we are here. Um, about to go on Halloween Patrol. Uh, I don't understand how they're saying that we're gonna be back before dark, because usually sunset, I feel it doesn't last that very long, so I feel like we're gonna be stuck outside in the dark. <laughs> so, an agreement with the Neighborhood Association. Um, yeah. He rubbed the back of his neck and smiled sheepishly. You get pretty good at coming up with excuses when you've been at this for a while. It's a decent cover-up that gets us out of answering questions about why we're walking around the neighborhood. Is that really all we're going to do? Pretty much. There's just one place in the woods Violas asked me to check. Otherwise, you really do just make sure neighborhood kids don't get bullied by stray drifters and the like. It was still early, but I did see a few kids out and about, already going door to door. I honestly didn't know people even still did this. I just assumed everyone took their kids to the mall or something. Our neighborhood was just kind of school, old school, I guess. Daniel led us to the tree, treed path that went alongside the road. There was a partial screen of trees that shielded us from the street and the woods on the other side. I ran my hands up my arms and shivering slightly. It was chilly, but it wasn't really cold. But I, I wasn't really cold, sorry. I couldn't stop another shiver from running through me, though. Danny glanced down at me, moving a bit closer as he walked. Cold? No, I just feel tingling? I don't know how to describe it. It's just sort of jittery and tingly. It's been building up for a while now. Probably just some magic energy in the air. You're a lot more sensitive to that than we are. I figured that was it. I can't feel it at all. Me either, really. I could feel it as soon as I got up, but it's gotten worse as the day went on. Well, this is your first time really experiencing it full force, so I'm sure it's a bit of a weird feeling. You'll get used to it. I think. <laughs> Where are we going anyway? Down to the bridge first, just to check on it. The bridge? Why does it need checking? It can be kind of a trouble spot. Nothing typically lurks under it, right? No, I don't think we'll find anything lurking. I knew they rehomed the sprig and I've run into, but when they re-reached the br bridge, I still half expected to hear it anyway. Hang on. He hopped down from the road and slid his way down the toward the creek. I shuddered and rubbed my arms again. The hairs on the back of my neck started standing up and I thought I heard a rustling in the trees on the other side of the bridge. Then he disappeared underneath and I nervously edged my way in that direction. Elliot was standing on the raised edge, leaning against the wooden railing. Bridges and crossroads are kind of naturally prone to supernatural activity, so we always have to keep a close eye on this spot. I jumped when he spoke. Ugh, I hadn't been expecting to be so much on edge tonight. You okay? Yeah, it's okay, so this is kind of a trouble area then. Yeah, on nights like tonight, this is a bit of a hot spot. Why is it that? Why is that exactly? Danny had been gone for a while. I wasn't sure if I should call out to him or not. Bridges are luminal spaces or something like that. Luminal? What? Danny's head popped back up as he climbed his way back up the creek. Nothing there, no signs of any recent activity. Mozzie, you and I should stop back before the night's over, though. Thank goodness. And the word you want is liminal. Oh, yeah, liminal. That's the one. Oh, liminal spaces. I was fa familiar with the concept of a liminal space. Spaces that were sort of in between. Places of transition. I had no idea they were legitimate supernatural phenomenon, though. That makes slightly more sense, I guess. Come on, this way. He took my hand as we walked to the other side of the road and led the way down a little footpath into the trees. Halfway down the embankment, I lost my footing and slipped down with a panicked squeak. My hands raked through the brush, the brush as I tried to catch something to stop myself. I ended up crashing into Danny. He caught me easily and put an arm around my shoulder as he helped me the rest of the way down. You okay? Just take it a little slower. My heart sped up a little and I immediately decided that nothing that happened this evening was going to be good for my blood pressure. Um, uh, mm, I don't know what choices to pick. What the hell? It's been a hot minute since gaming choice, too, besides like going to pick Spencer to take me home. Um, I'm good now, thank you. Uh, thanks for breaking my fall. Elliot cleared his throat and grinned down at us. Don't I get a hand down? Sure. He offered Elliot and Hannah and grinned back. Do you want a hug too? <laughs> Not from you. If Michiko wants. Nope, my hugs have been reserved in advance. And most of them have been spoken for these days. Aww. Don't worry, Michiko. We'll help you find your way around. He took my hand and pulled me closer, squeezing it slightly as he leaned down. Remember, I did tell you it's okay to rely on me a bit more. So cute. But uh, I feel bad doing this in front of Elliot. I don't want him to feel like the third wheel. Alright, I'm the third wheel of these two, okay? 
<laughs> My face went hot, her eyes met and he smiled again. For a moment, I was startled again by how beautiful and eerie his eyes could be. Ah, oh, such a charming guy. I looked away, desperately trying not to be embarrassed. Especially with Elliot watching us with a teasing smirk on his face. The three of us started off into the woods together and had no idea, or, uh, and I had to wonder, sorry, just how many times the two of them had done this. I wasn't sure how often there were nights like this. Sim Hain was only one. I knew Midsummer had to be one as well. Possibly even things like the solstices. It hit me again how much I had learned about this paranormal world. I should probably look up, look that up as look up, look that up so I'm prepared for the next event like this. Danny didn't let go of my hand as we walked. Stay close. In liminal zones, you can easily step right across the gate into another realm without realizing it. Another realm, like fairy, right? Well, it's not the only one though, but its borders are expanding during Samhain. Fairy isn't the only realm to look out for. There are other spirit and supernatural realms that expand or open up on nights like these. It'll be easier for you then than us since you're more in tune with those wavelengths. That must be why my skin feels like it's got ants crawling on it. Danny gave me a worried look and squeezed my hand again. Want me to take you home? Not yet. I can stay out a little longer. I'm glad I'd actually be out doing something instead of being at home wondering what you guys are doing. Being inside didn't really help anyway. He smiled at me, looking like he was glad to hear me say that. Okay, if you start feeling too uncomfortable though, just let me know. I'll be fine. It's still a while before sundown, so I could stay a bit longer. Probably. I kept hearing a strange crackling in my ears that I would think was just our feet crunching through the underbrush. I only it wasn't. And very every so often I felt like there was someone coming along the path behind us, but when I looked there was never anyone there. Neither Danny nor Ellie acted like they heard anything, and I knew Danny had way better hearing than I did. So I kept telling myself I was imagining things. I was just letting the eeriness get to me, but I couldn't quite get rid of the feeling that I was being watched. The first spot we stopped at was an odd clearing with stones piled in the center of a Karn. Sinner like a, a Karen? Sorry. <laughs> Is that Karen? I don't know. I'd never been there before, but p based on the path we took, it seemed like Danny and Elliot both knew it pretty well. Just stay here next to Elliot. I need to check something. Don't step into the clearing, okay? Got it. Danny let go of my hand and walked out to the center, crouching to check out something on the ground near the stones. I unconsciously moved closer to Elliot. Uh... <laughs> There's a sharp crack behind us, and I turned quickly at the same time Danny stood and looked at the same direction. He definitely heard that one. There was a shuffle of movement, and I saw a shadow move. Suddenly, Danny was racing past us. There's something, someone following us. Elliot stayed with her, and he was gone, already disappearing into the trees. What was that? Why was someone following us? I don't know. It's hard to catch the scent of things in the forest. Too many smells, and, well, we're standing kind of close. <laughs> Sorry. Do I smell weird? It's okay. It's just, um... He read the back of his neck and gave me a silly smile. Didn't be creeped out, okay? But I think you must have cut your hand or something earlier when you nearly fell. The smell of blood is pretty strong. How can I not be creeped out by that? I actually had grazed my hand on the on a blackberry vine when I tried to stop myself from falling. Just a little, though. So you can smell my blood right now? I edged away slightly as a dreamy expression washed over his face. <laughs> Excuse me. I am not your appetizer right now. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. It has a really unique smell. Not quite mortal, not quite fey. It's not a making you hungry, is it? No, I mean, well, it doesn't have that sort of scent that makes me hungry, really. But, you know, I definitely don't know. I didn't even want to know what he was thinking about. I'll just stand over here. Forgetting Danny's earlier warning, I moved to step in just inside the clearing to put a bit of distance between me and Elliot. He snapped back to attention and reached a hand out right as I apparently walked right through his spider web. Don't go that! I yelped loudly. Fuck! Oh my god, I'm in a no. Uh, I'm in a new world already! What the fuck? How do I get out of here? It's like I'm in the under. It's what it is called in uh, Stranger Things, the under. the underworld? I don't fucking know. I'm in that world now. <laughs> I yelled loudly and tried to brush the web off, slapping at my hair and face, just in case its resident spider decided to jump on me for revenge when I destroyed its home. I didn't pull any webs off, much less a spider. I probably looked like an idiot shrieking dancing around like that. When I looked back at Elliot, I expected to see him laughing at me, but he was gone. Uh, I looked around wildly. Why is it suddenly so dark? Elliot? Nothing. Elliot? Danny? 
I thought I heard Ellie calling me, calling me, but it sounded so far away. Why was he so far away? Joe watched over me as I tried to retrace my steps back to where I'd been standing. Ellie was still nowhere in sight. Fuck. Danny Ted told me to stay out of the clearing like an idiot. I totally forgot his warning. Ugh, why did this always happen to me? If there was a worst case scenario involving magic or magic creatures, I was somehow going to be stumbled into it. Upside down. I'm in the upside down, not underworld. What the fuck? <laughs> I was somehow going to stumble into it every damn time. Good grief. I was practically shouting, which is probably stupid considering I didn't even know where I was at this point. I wondered if it was one of those ghost roads or whatever. I mean, it's not a road, really. How do I get out of here? It looked like the forest, but Elliot wasn't where he should be, and there was no one else around either, and it was dark. Ooh, fairies. Fairy fireflies. I saw a softly glowing light start to float around, float through the clearing. Will, will the wisps? I'll read up, I'd read about them, sorry. They were usually harmless, though some legends said they consumed life force or whatever. It should be okay for me since I was fade, but something fell off. It was hard to explain it. Suddenly, every hair on my neck was on end, and every fiber of my being was telling me to get out of there. I looked around slowly. Nothing seemed to miss. I, at least nothing I could see. But still, something's rotten in the state of Denmark. Unfortunately, I had no idea how to get back to where I belonged. I really wish those boys would have told me if I do happen to accidentally fall in this area, what to do, because that would be very helpful right now. I watched the little glowing things flit around, steering clear of them as I tried to find them, feel out a way back into, well, the real world, I guess. I still wasn't even sure what or where I'd stumbled into. I stopped. What was that? It sounded like a whisper. I shook my head. No, I was just imagining things. I rubbed my arms. The tingling had worsened ever since walking through that spider web. Though I was just, though I was assuming at this point it was just it, that it wasn't just a spider web. The question remained though, where was I? Why was I so sleepy suddenly? I rubbed at my drooping eyelids, trying to stay focused without thinking I set a hand on a nearby tree to steady myself. What is this? The little tickly voice at the back of my mind stirred and sh I shook my head, trying to clear it. Psst. Excuse me? There was a soft crunch of underbrush and my head snapped up. I looked around anxiously, the feeling of, of sleepiness fading a bit. Did you hear that? Who was I even talking to at this point? And why was I whispering? Oh, I can see you. <laughs> That's the scariest shit ever! <laughs> I spread around the faint whisper behind me. There was nothing there, but I caught what looked like a shadow moving in my peripheral. I turned again, but it moved when I did. My skin prickled as goosebumps rose on my arms. Oh crap. The sudden rush of adrenaline made me hyper aware of every sound and every bit of movement. There was definitely something hovering behind me. I could feel the faint wind of its presence lurking just out of sight. Red. Red? Please, I hate anything that looks like no face and you kind of look like no face with a little black blob and an eyeball. I looked again and caught sight of a familiar dark form of pale eyes. Are you are you the bitch that stole my hair? It was that drifter. Motherfucker. Please be a a dark knight and save me. I'll say a white knight, but that's Danny. <laughs> Damn it, why does this always happen to me? It wasn't red. What? What was it? red? Something passed over my head, almost like a hand stroking my hair. Ew! I jerked away with a yelp and whirled around. It still managed to stay out just out of sight. I suddenly remembered it pulling out my hair. It was red. When the glamour wore off, my hair turned white. Is that what it meant? It wasn't red. That's not my fault! Tricked. Tricked. You tricked me! I don't know. <laughs> I felt something close around my hair and whipped my head around, stumbling back. <laughs> I'm like high outside of it. A large black mass with gangly limbs and pale eyes. Oh, <laughs> please don't get too close. It loomed over me, coming closer. It's something that looked like a large hand stretched out towards me. Nope. I scrambled away and crashed my, my way through the trees. Here we go again. At least this time I had shoes. And this time we're gonna save, because fuck that. Fuck that, drifter. Oh, fuck that. Nope. Why is it coming towards my face? Take all of my hair? Not my fault I bamboozled you thinking you had red hair. Nope, I got white hair. That's my glamour. Ha, huh? just jokes on you. But anyway, this is where I'm going to end with today's episode off. Before I get way over time, uh, I need to catch a breath and I need to get some more water for this recording session. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.